faces and some unfamiliar ones. Uh, one of the problems of having the same students in multiple classes is they cannot repeat jokes. So. <laughs> so before we start, let me just mention uh, quickly a couple of things. Uh, so there are. So this is an informal talk, as you can see. I have a notepad, but it's mainly a show. Uh, so please stop me if you have any questions. Uh, I would. So there is no reason to sort of let me finish whatever I am talking about. Raise your hand. Secondly, of course, uh, it's an hour of talk, and there is no way, as you, might, as you might imagine, there is no way I can make justice to the entire course. So we'll sort of keep it open-ended to we'll, uh, go as much as we can, and give you sort of at the end, I'll give you. A, a couple of extensions of where the game theory is going nowadays. And finally, I'm not going to assume that you guys know too much game theory. I'm not quite sure how much game theory you know. If you have, if you're an expert in game theory, this is probably not the uh, talk for you. If you have no idea what game theory is, that's good enough. If you have uh, seen Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind, that's about more than I would expect. <laughs> Okay, so, so so these are the three uh, three quick topics. So let me just give you a rough outline of what we're going to do. We'll talk about a bit, bit, bit of a history of game theory. So the history of the subject. Then we'll touch on sequential games. Perfect information. We'll uh, quickly touch on simultaneous games. And then at the end, maybe we'll talk about a few extensions of the ideas. That's another roadmap. So we're going to quickly give you a perspective of how this subject came about, and then we'll talk about these sort things. Throughout, I'll try to give you applications, hopefully from economics, from politics, from other social sciences, from evolutionary biology, for example. Okay, so I mean, again, I'm not a historian by any means, but what, as far as I know, one of the first logical approaches to analyzing games was uh, done in 1944 by these two guys. There's this famous book called Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. Uh, by these two guys, von Neumann And Morgenstern. And it's written in 1944. So, one of the books that you know, everybody talks about is very similar to the book A Brief History of Time, in the, in the sense that everybody talks about it but nobody ever reads it. And this is one of those books, yes. <laughs> so, so I, I don't know how much you, of John, uh, of what time you know, he was this. Uh, Incredibly bright mathematician who was uh, in the early 1920s, 1930s, he was a professor at Princeton. One of the most arrogant individuals apparently that ever lived. He was once called uh, the most brilliant person in Princeton, which is, you know, seems okay, but at that point of time Einstein was in Princeton, so I guess he was really bright guy. So, he, so his idea, what he was trying to do in this book, is trying to find out a rational way of playing games. So how does, if you are a super rational individual who can calculate millions of steps ahead, how would two super rational individuals play, uh, play a typical game? And his primary interest was poker. So he wanted to see whether there's a sort of a rational way of playing poker. He wanted to find out. So, so, so the idea was how to play, what is the rational way of playing poker? So right away, von Neumann, while he was trying to find out this theory, 
if you ran into two big problems. So the first problem, of course, is that the game of poker is really complicated. You know, so there are thousands of possible options, and each option has these different distributions and all that stuff. So computationally, it was not as easy as, as it seemed in the beginning. So he could come up with you know, sort of existence results. There exists a good strategy, but exactly what strategy it is was hard to determine because of the complexity of the game. That was the first problem he ran into. The second problem is sort of much more, more philosophical problem. Is that I don't know how, how many of you guys play poker. I don't play poker, but for people who don't play poker, the idea is if there's a possibility that you can bluff if you have a good hand, if you have a bad hand, or try to play, play it cool even if you have a good hand. So there are possibilities of trying to deceive your opponent. So, but the problem is if you think about what strategy you should use, it like becomes very complicated. So for example, if I if I think my part, my opponent is a careful guy, then I might bluff, right? So what I'm going to do, whether I'm, I'm going to bluff or fold, depends on what I think he thinks about me, right? But what he thinks about me depends on what he thinks I would do. So what I should do depends on what I think he thinks, what I think, what he thinks, and what I think he thinks, and then life becomes completely messy, and your head starts hurting, right? So, 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 so if I want to do something, I have to, if I, if I bluff, it's the best strategy to to challenge me with it, if I have a bad hand, right? But if I if he challenges, it's probably not the best strategy to bluff. You see what I'm saying? See, so, so if I, I will bluff if I think he thinks I have a bad hand, but I would not bluff if he thinks that I think that he thinks that I have a bad hand and so on and so on. So so, so this is this sort of was this incredible problem that one had to deal with. So that was sort of a more philosophical problem. So there are computational problems of in game theory as well as philosophical problems. So let me sort of introduce one of the examples that von Neumann thought of, and we'll come back to this example at the end of the lecture and see what, what we can do, how we can solve this game. So here's, here's a simple example. So this is not exactly a game of poker, so, so it's an extremely unfair simplistic version of poker. So let's say there are two players, players one and two. And player one, and both of them look at their hands, and then they have two, player one starts the game. And he, can, he has two strategies. He can either check, which means right away. So at first, let me just rephrase the rules. At the beginning, both players, there are two players, both players put down a dollar on the table. Okay, that's the ante. So I put down a dollar, my opponent puts down a dollar. Okay. After we put down a dollar, then we look at our hands. So now I start, let's say, I have two options. Either I can check right away, which means that I look at my hand and I say, let's, see, let's have a showdown. So whoever has a better hand wins that dollar. Is that okay? So the game ends here if I check. So it's a showdown here, okay? So it's incredibly unfair to player two, as you can see. Because player two has no option of doing anything. I can just stop the game right away if I look at my hand. Is that, is that, is that okay? So this is not quite poker. Or I can bet. So I initially start off with an ante of a buck, and if I bet, let's say I bet a thousand dollars. So I've got two possible bets, either a dollar or a thousand dollars in second round. Is that okay? So I bet, now player two gets to move, and player two has two options, either to fold, that means he says, sorry, it's not worth my time, so he loses his buck. Is that okay? The ante that he put up. Or he can check, which means that he's going to put down a thousand dollars, and then whoever has a better hand wins. Is that clear? So the game would end here. Are you guys all with me so far? Yes. So, so it's sort of a one-shot poker, which is a very, very simplified version of what we actually play, right? So the question is, if two rational players are playing this game, as in rational as in you are really smart, you can compute all the probabilities, you know what base rule is and all that stuff. So if two rational players are playing this game, then what would be the strategy? What, how should this game be played? Try to That's the question. Is that okay? So if you could answer this question, then you can extend the idea to more realistic in like actual poker and so on. So, so let's keep this game at the back of our minds, and we'll come back at the end and we'll try to solve this game. But this is the idea. So a lot of other games. Uh, so von Neumann came up with this theory, of, which is called the min-max theory of playing these kinds of games. But what he was doing is he was only concentrating on what we call zero-sum games. 
So most games that we actually think of in life, the games that are actually played on the field, etc., are what we call zero-sum games. In other words, if I am winning, suppose two of us are playing this game, if I am winning, automatically it means that you are losing. Right. If I score a goal, automatically your team is behind. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Yes. So that's what is called a zero-sum game. Right? So, it's, so we are exact opponents of one another. Right? So if my happiness is equal to your sadness. <laughs> so, so if you think of the game of tic-tac-toe, for example, which is the most stupid game of all, it, that game is also a zero-sum game, right? Where if I win, if I have one of those things in you know, one line, then I win, you lose, yes. Poker is also a zero-sum game. So if I win, you lose, because that's actual money gets transferred, right? But then people realize that not all this idea of games can be extended to what is called non-zero-sum games. And that idea was by shelling. <coughs> so he wrote this famous book called The Strategy of Conflict. Excellent book to read. He wrote this book where he extended the idea of von Neumann's zero-sum games to non-zero-sum games. So let's, so for people who like mathematical locations, let's sort of try to give you an idea of what this means. So the subject of economics, for example, or any other social sciences, we assume that we all have internally a happiness function, right? And we're trying to maximize that happiness function, whatever that is. So let's say we have two people, I and J, in, in a society, economics assumes we are both trying to max it. So I have a utility function UI, whatever that is. You have a utility function UJ, whatever that is. And I'm trying to maximize my utility function by choosing the right action that I have in my control. Right? Is that okay? You are doing the same thing. But a AI and AJs are the possible actions we can take, yes? Subject to some constraints, of course. That, that is what is called decision theory, right? Where my action, I, I choose my action independently, you choose your action independently, and we both maximize our happiness, yes? What game theory says is that my happiness not only depends on what I do, but also on what you do, right? That's the, that's the difference, is that okay? So I, only, I can only control this part, right? By choosing the right action. And you are controlling this part, but I'm trying to maximize my happiness by choosing the right AI, is that okay? But I don't have AJ under my control. I can influence AJ by choosing the right AI. Is, it, is that clear? So that's what game theory is, yes? So that's the fundamental, so this is what decision theory is, this is what game theory is. What von Neumann was doing, he was saying that UI of AI, AJ, so, so I choose action AI, you choose action AJ. <laughs> Your happiness is exactly negative of my happiness, is that okay? Suppose you get some happiness, if I choose AI, you choose AJ, I get 75 units of happiness, you know what that is. <laughs> is that okay? What von Neumann was doing was assuming that if, I get seven, if I'm happy by 75 units, you must be sad by 75 units. Is that, is that clear? That's the typical game. What Schelling said is that we don't have to worry at all. We just look at gen gen general functions like these. So we not, it need not be that UI is negative UJ. It could be any, could take any form. Is that okay? So the von Neumann's zero-sum game would be a special case of Schelling's game. So it's only four years. Okay. So that's that was it sort of.